Welcome to the Coach's Corner with Winning with Wisdom, where our motto is either you're winning with wisdom in life or you're losing with foolishness. And um, as we come to you uh, today, as you can see, our topic for the discussion is a fall from grace. I uh, had the opportunity to watch uh, Tyler Perry's new movie uh, that he brought out. Uh, this past weekend, and um, and we just want to uh, look at some different dynamics um, from the movie and 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 grab some experiences uh, because art imitates life, and life imitates art. And um, he received, you know, some backlash from it, but but that's just the reality of when you're on top. People can always throw at you or say whatever. But at the end of the day, he still capitalized and he's still a multimillionaire. And, um, you know, and so and it uh, it just deals with, you know, how he capitalizes a lot off black women. Uh, but he has a prophetic way of writing and uh, releasing the drama and the experiences of just what's real and what's the reality of real life. And whenever you have a gift of prophetic, which you know it can operate in various forms he just happens to be able to put here's in movies and plays and uh it's going to come under attack because the prophetic exposes and and the prophetic brings healing and, and deliverance so uh to say that uh one of the things we want to focus on today is the pain of loneliness the pain of loneliness and um and this and just look at how it's it's very long, painful uh, to be by yourself. The pain of loneliness, and there are uh, even the scriptures say it's not good for man or woman to be alone. And uh, you know the pain of loneliness. And um, we want to look at today um, for our scripture reference. We're going to utilize uh, Job chapter three, uh, verse twenty-five. It said, for the thing I greatly feared has come upon me and what I dreaded has happened to me. <clears throat> so one of the writers said, the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. And uh, as we look at this uh, today and uh, we even we look in the, um, uh, at the movie, how the pain of the black woman growing older by herself without the love, affection, and companionship of a husband. Yes, the pain of the black woman growing older by herself without the love, affection, and companionship of a husband. That was one uh, thing that was greatly noted in, the, uh, in this movie. And um, I'm gonna deal with that today. And just, you know, uh, um, you know, because that's a real reality. That's a real reality. Um, you know, just dreaded growing old, being by yourself, not having no one to hold you, no one to comfort you, no one to share your day with and your experiences with the pain of loneliness. And there was two women that were in the movie, uh, Grace and then her friend, you know, growing older, no husbands, just lonely. Both had had experiences. But today we're really going to focus on Grace's traumatic experience because the fall from grace as she um was the main character and we want to look at now the law of attraction the law of attraction how you attract in life what's on the inside of you you attract the same pain and experiences that you harbor in your heart and in your subconscious mind do you understand that you harbor in your heart and in your subconscious mind? You attract it. Even Proverbs 4 and 23 says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. And the character, the woman Grace in the movie, uh, she had had a bad marriage. Her first marriage was bad. She caught her husband in bed with another woman and she knew the other woman. And, you know, so she had a painful experience 
It just don't seem like there was much joy uh, in that marriage. And her first marriage did not end with much joy. Seemed like there was, you know, that was emotional abuse. You understand? Uh, emotional abuse is when, you know, when somebody is hurting your heart and, you know, and cheating on you and, um, and using you. You understand? And, um, you know, and uh, just doing you wrong doing evil against you and stabbing you and behind your back someone that you was giving your all to you loving and you caring about but they're hurting you that creates emotional abuse you understand so grace was carrying in her heart uh you know and in her subconscious mind because immediately when she met her new man she began to release her bad experiences to him do you understand when she met th this new man, she immediately began to tell him about all the bad things that she had gone through in another relationship in her previous marriage. Do you understand? And even that this other woman was living her life that got her husband now and that the drapes were still up in their old house. So in her subconscious mind and in her heart, she was harboring this bitterness and these painful experiences. Do you understand? And then yeah, and, and, and the thing that was, now she's attracting a man, mind you. You know, the law of attraction. You attract who you are. Now pain attracts pain. Do you understand? A bad, you know, because she's harboring this. Now she's getting ready to attract a man that's going to be just like, uh, I'm going to hold on to that. Just hold on. You see where I'm going. You know, the thing that I greatly feared. So in Grace's life, you can imagine that she was constantly fearing about getting with the same kind of man again. She would probably fear marriage, fear that I got to guard my heart. I got to keep myself from being emotionally abused again, from being hurt like that. Do you understand? I got to keep myself from being trespassed against where that means to be wounded to the very soul and the core of your being where the pain could last a lifetime. So now Grace is moving on through her life and she meets another man. Do you understand? And eventually uh, he becomes her husband. He eventually uh, uh, marries her. And, uh, you know, and now Grace, you know, her in on, on one side of her mind, she's got joy. And on the other side of her mind, she has fear. Do you understand? Fear. And fear brings torment. Do you understand? Uh, fear it, it brings torment. You, you, you know what I'm saying? It um, Fear will hunt you and fear is, is dramatic. That's why in Job 3 and 25, he said, for the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me and what I dreaded has happened to me. Do you understand? And so, and another thing, fear can come from unforgiveness. When you, unforgiveness, and we want to, we want to bring that in today, unforgiveness because fear can be birthed out of unforgiveness. When you hold on uh, to something and when you won't, when you refuse to let go, you go through your whole life, uh, you know what I'm saying, thinking that you're gonna do me just like they did. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I never go through that again and I, I wanna get so-and-so back for what they did unto me. But what happened is unforgiveness. You know what I'm saying? Unforgiveness, you know, comes from fear. And unforgiveness is like a cancer. Unforgiveness is equivalent to you eating poison, but expecting somebody else to die. Listen, unforgiveness harboring, because unforgiveness is harboring the pain in your heart and in your subconscious mind of what they did to you. And if you could ever, and how you really want to get them back. So unforgiveness keeps your life stuck in a place. It keeps your life stuck in a painful place. Do you understand? So what you do in life, instead of moving on, all you do, you may move on with different people, but you attract the same experiences. Grace moved on with a new husband. Do you understand? And thought, But the thing about it, she attracted the same experience with her new husband that she had with her former husband. She caught her new husband in the bed with another woman. Do you understand why? Because you, it's the law of attraction. And when you harbor fear, come on, the very thing which she feared came upon her and the dread happened to her. Do you understand? Because unforgiveness 
it, it, it shapes you and it molds you. Do you understand? Unforgiveness gets in the very DNA of who you are. That's why in Psalms 51 and 5, uh, the writer said, I was born in sin and shapen in iniquity, meaning what they did to me, meaning, you know, the abuse and the mistreatment. Do you understand? And, you know, the, the, the name calling uh, the, from the verbal abuse, the physical abuse, the emotional abuse, it got, it got into the very DNA of the writer. Do you understand? And it became a part of him. Do you understand? So therefore hurt people begin to hurt others. It's, it's, it's by default. Do you understand? Because it's in the very DNA, even though a person hated what they went through and hated the experiences and hated the pain. Do you understand? But because of unforgiveness and them not releasing it, do you understand? It's got into the very DN DNA of who they are. It's a part of their nature. So everywhere they go, no matter what man this woman meets, she 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 has a wall of defense. Are you going to hurt me? Are, are, are you going are, are you going to molest my children? Are you going to touch us? Are you going to do us wrong? Are you going to take from us? Do you understand? And, and, and vice versa with a man. Do you understand? It's, it's the same. Why? Because it's the law of attraction and whatever bitterness and ill feelings that you hold in you. You will continue to attract that. Come on, glory to God. You will that will continue uh, to be reproduced. You will continue to harvest the very thing that you hate. Unforgiveness will cause this. Listen, 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 listen. Glory to God as we get ready to wrap this up. Unforgiveness will cause you to become a doer of what was done to you. Do you understand? It will cause you to do the same thing that was done to you. Listen, unforgiveness would be selling is selling your soul out to whomever hurts you. Do you understand? Whoever, whatever, unforgiveness, hold on there, is selling your very soul out to them. Do you understand? Listen, take your soul back from them. Do you understand? And, and you sell your soul out to them and the experience. And that experience of whatever pain it was, it will forever own you. Grace had moved on with her life. But the experiences and the pain and the hurt of her former husband forever owned her. She sold her soul out to her past. Do you understand? And what it, God, glory to God. And so she became forever a victim of her yesterday. Do you understand? You got to take up your life. Do you understand? You got to crucify your flesh. You got to crucify them thoughts. And we're going to deal with that, that you can take your life. Don't sell your soul out to those that who've hurt you, who violated you. Do you understand? You want to move on with your life. Do you understand? Because what you do, you put your life at stake. You put your children's life at stake. Do you understand? Do you, do you know how many people, women that have been raped or molested, and if the same thing has happened to their daughters that they tried to protect and keep from it because they live their life in fear that I don't, this ain't going to happen to my daughter. I'm going to keep her and protect her and I'll be darned the same thing happened to her. Or women that got pregnant at a young age, at a teenage age, as a teenager and their daughter end up doing the same thing. Do you understand? The very thing they tried to keep their child from, it happened to them. Do you understand? This, that's, this is what unforgiveness can do. It can leave the experience. Do you understand? The hurt and the pain and the trauma of it harbored in your heart and in your subconscious mind. Do you understand? And you become forever a victim. And listen, you are no longer their victim anymore. You are a victim of your own thoughts. Do you understand? You are a victim. Oh, my, my, my. There it is. Because as a man or a woman think it, so are they. Do you understand? You become a victim of your own thoughts now. Hi, my, my, listen. Forgiveness takes strength. Because it's picking up your life and moving on. Forgiveness takes strength. Do you understand? So in that movie, when Grace beat, beat that man with that baseball bat, beat her husband, her new husband beat the crap out of him with that baseball bat and then pushed him down the stairs. Yeah, that would have killed him. <laughs> oh, that'll kill somebody. Listen, she wasn't only beating him. She was beating her ex-husband also. Come on, come on. 
she was beating her ex-husband also. Come on. Lord of God, she was beating everybody that ever hurt her. Do you understand? It, it didn't deal with her childhood life. But I'm pretty sure she had gone through some things as a little girl. She beat everybody that ever hurt her, every, everybody that ever violated her. Do you understand in the beating of that situation? Because unforgiveness, watch this, it will kill you and will cause you to kill others. It's referred to in the book of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14 as a wounded spirit, a wounded spirit. And it's the spirit of a man that will sustain his in or her infirmities, her sicknesses, her weaknesses, our brokenness, but a wounded spirit who can bear. Can't nobody bear a wounded spirit. Do you understand? But unforgiveness will kill you. It will wound your spirit. You can't handle a wounded spirit. Do you understand? Unforgiveness is not about them. It's about you picking up your life and moving on. Do you understand? Glory to God. Realizing vengeance, the God said, vengeance is mine. I'll repay evil, says the Lord. Do you understand? Ah, oh, my, my, my. Listen, 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 listen. So, so here it is. Here it is. Here it is. A joyful heart is good, is a good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Listen, listen, if you, if you don't forgive, then you will set up a root of bitterness in you, which will defile your whole life. You can basically move on from a traumatic experience, but curse yourself because you refuse to let it go. But you have moved on. You could defile the rest of your life. You could defile your children's life. You can run off everybody that tries to come in your life that will try to love you from this day forward. Why? From a traumatic experience. Listen, as we get ready to wrap this up, forgiveness does not wipe, wipe, does not wipe our memory away. So notice, forgiveness, it doesn't wipe the memory away. Let's, let's, let me be real with this. Forgiveness does not remove all the consequences of the wrongdoing. Forgiveness does not rebuild the trust. And forgiveness does not always result in reconciliation. So know that. Know those four points. But forgiveness allows you to live your life and live your life more abundantly. Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, in fear and unforgiveness, that grace may abound? Come on, glory to God. That grace may abound. God forbid. God forbid. Grace is a gift from God that brings salvation, healing, deliverance, breakthroughs, peace, hope, and miracles. Listen, listen, listen. Glory to God. Hold on to grace. Don't you fall from grace. Glory to God. Forgetting those things which are behind you. Come on. <laughs> and pressing toward to what God has before you. Joseph in the Bible, he told those that hurt him, y'all meant it for evil. But God turned y'all evil into my good. Let that be your testimony. And watch God increase you and enlarge your territory. Watch him send your destiny helpers into your life. There's a man that will love you Glory to God and will marry you. He's searching for you, but he don't want to find you as a woman right now in this broken state that you are in. Because when a man findeth the wife, he findeth the good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. He don't need to find a bad, broken thing that's traumatic and that's, um, that's in trauma from past experiences. Come on. Glory to God. My, my, my grace to put you together again. Glory to God. God's wholeness. Be healed, set free, and deliver. There ain't no falling from grace. Hey, this is Dr. Sullivan with the Coach's Corner. It's good to be back uh, here. Um, the, uh, our first uh, live experience of 20 of the new year, uh, the new decade. Hey, peace and love till next time.